as long as I remember, I haven't necessarily been great with wires. It seems that I always tend to get them tangled up or forget to bring them, and it has become a thorn in my side, especially when going out to do parks on the air, amateur radio activations, which require a lot of wires. My case in point is, is I just forgot this cable, and that sounded like hot garbage. But what happens if I actually do remember my antenna wire and I have it on a winder that I figure eight or I circled around or I somehow put on that antenna winder? Yep, you guessed it. It's going to get tangled up in my backpack and I'm going to be frustrated. Or I'm going to be in such a hurry to get home and see the wife and kids that I don't have that I'm going to just throw it all in the backpack on the way out and it's going to get a rat's nest. Regardless, it's going to get a rat's nest. And what is the solution to this? Teach the dog how to wind the wire. No, wait, that was already done when we taught him how to call CQ. The next best thing that we could do is we could learn how to make a chalk line wire antenna so that we could use a wire antenna portable, wind it up really quick, but also have multiple links for our NFED half waves for our random wires so that we can get more bands, more than four. Maybe we can get all the bands. I ended up picking up four chalk lines from my local ham depot. And yes, I did use different brands just to see what was available. And from Home Depot or Ace Hardware, I picked up this Irwin chalk line, but I went over to Harbor Freight as well. Harbor Freight did have the Pittsburgh brand chalk line, and although it will still work the same way, I did have a couple of issues or things I disliked with the actual Pittsburgh brand. So with this, it's about $9.99. The Pittsburgh one was $3.99. And on the back here, there's two screws, which I took apart, and this opens up. Inside of this case is this reel right here filled with yarn originally and basically what I did is I removed the reel and I removed the yarn but I was mindful of this piece of felt right here as well as on the end of the yarn there's two pieces that you're going to want to make sure you keep. Number one is this little eyelet right here that you could probably barely see and number two is at the very end and it's this little piece right here. So with the yarn removed you're going to want to go ahead and add your antenna wire. When choosing wire, there are a few considerations that I'd like to share with you. And number one was when I ended up using this Pittsburgh chalk line from Harbor Freight and I reel in the wire, I noticed that this poly stealth like wire gets scraped away, or at least the outside coating gets scraped away because the eyelet that's within here, it's not necessarily smoothed out. One of the recommendations I may make if you're going to do this after winding everything up is don't put that eyelid back on and see what happens. But ultimately, when I went with the Irwin, I decided on 30 gauge BN Tech Go wire. After all, it's silicone coated. It's small enough to fit at least 100 feet on this reel. And that was appealing to me. Then a viewer of the channel suggested, why don't I use something like trolling wire or fishing line trolling wire? And that's a great solution. I have some of this blood run 30 pound test that's on the way. It just hasn't made it yet. But ultimately, whatever wire you choose, the next step that you're going to want to do is to wind this up. To wind this reel will also depend on what type of chalk line you decide to use. The Pittsburgh, for example, does not have a hole on the inside for the wire to fish through before tying a knot. And so very simply, I just tied a knot and I reeled it up. However, this Irwin brand here does have a hole where I was able to fish the wire through, wrap around the reel once, and then tie a knot, which seems to be a lot more sturdy. After that, the fun part starts and I partially reassembled the Irwin, and then I wound it up with the wire collecting onto the actual reel. When I was nearly complete winding the wire onto the reel, I then went ahead and I placed this eyelet in the wire, and I placed the eyelet back where it belongs on the actual case itself. I then went ahead and I closed the case up, and I screwed it back in, and I continued to wind everything until I got to the very end of the wire, where at that point, initially, here's what I did. I ended up overthinking things tremendously. I took this piece here, the end little clip, which is metallic and conductive, and I ended up trying to take a screw through here, put a screw through a nut on, and somehow fit this wire in. 
what am I doing was the question because then I realized very quickly that I could just take a ring connector, place the ring connector at the edge of the wire, solder it on or crimp it on, and perfectly enough then, all the ring connectors will fit onto my NFED random wires and my NFED half waves. And the concept is simple. Here I have this at the top of my mast in a sloper configuration. And yeah, everything's kind of looking good, right? After all, the reel itself will be the end of the antenna. And when I need to, I could adjust different lengths. And you might be saying, well, I don't want to have that end all the way on the top of the sloper. I want to have this end on the top of the sloper. And I completely understand. And that is why the trolling line, fishing line, would be nearly perfect. Another thing that might work out well for you, I just didn't try because there is a lot of things that could work out, is to go over to Ace Hardware and get some of that copper line that's very thin. And that might wind up on here very well. Ultimately, though, the concept and the theory is the same. We're going to end up with a product that looks like this when completely reassembled, and we should be able to rapidly deploy our antenna. And cleanup is really easy because all we have to do is reel it back in and put it in our backpack. Makes things very simple. But what good is this if it doesn't work? And how do you test if it works or not? You go out and you activate ham radio and you test and you experiment the joy of amateur radio. And one of the reasons that the bands were created for us to experiment in ham radio. One of the things that I noticed immediately was it was very easy to match this or tune this with an antenna analyzer. Utilizing my MFJ antenna analyzer, I was able to find a good match on 17 meters, somewhere around 96 feet of wire in a 25-foot sloper configuration. And my third contact was into Spain, and my fourth contact was into Sweden, and I was heard at a 5.9 into Spain and a 5.4 into Sweden, and the bands were dead. So I was pretty satisfied. With only two contacts, I activated that park. I've been informed that you need 10 contacts to activate a park. With 10 contacts... Oh, you should have more just in case. With 17 contacts in just over an hour, I decided to call it a day and I wrapped this up. Very easy to wrap up and put back into my bag, nice and easy, not worrying about a rat's nest. And I left the park and that's when I decided to get off of YouTube and go try to find a wife. Thanks for watching the channel, everybody, and wish me luck.